So I'm coming to you from a little bit different angle today, and that's because I looked through the videos that I've uploaded, and, well, there's one video that I guess I hadn't done yet, and it's kind of uh, probably an important video. Uh, and that is, the simple question is, what is the Great Bassoon? And so I thought I would uh, talk about that today, exactly what is the Great Bassoon. And in order to do that, I have to push the camera way back so that I can get 75% of the instrument in the screen. And here it is. The, uh, some prototype parts of the Great Bassoon. Um, the only thing here that is no longer considered a prototype is the bell, which I have here. Uh, but as you can see, this is the entire instrument height. Uh, I hope the whole thing fits in screen. The camera is so far away, I can't see anything on the screen from that distance. Uh, but So what is the Great Bassoon? Well, this is a large bassoon pitched midway between the bassoon and the contrabassoon. It is pitched in G one-fourth lower. Uh, there has been talk about building one in either G or in F. For the purposes of design and building it, we chose G. And this is after long discussions, uh, particularly with Richard Bobo, who uh, swayed me toward the G model, uh, simply because if you think about it, the bassoon itself is in F. Its fundamental scale is F. So if I put this instrument in G, pitched one, or lower, its fundamental scale is C. That means I can just play the C scale going up and down with no problems. If I put this instrument in F, the fundamental scale would be B flat, and that would be a little more difficult to do. One advantage of having this instrument in G is I don't have to have a transposed part. I can just use C fingerings, like the fingerings on an oboe or a saxophone, and read straight off of bass clef parts. No problem there. Uh, the instrument is built in large bassoon form. Uh, it is six feet, I say it's six feet eight, it's probably closer to six foot seven. That's, oh, uh, I'd have to convert that to meters, but it's uh, a little over two meters tall. Uh, to give you an idea of why I'm standing here, this is a, a standard doorway. This is actually the front door to my house. And the top of the Great Bassoon is about an inch from the top of the doorway. It is built in five joints. The bell. The bell, you'll notice, is quite long. That's because it has a low A on it. So if this instrument only descended to low B flat, the bell would only come up to about here. And we'd be talking about an instrument about five foot ten, maybe six feet tall. Uh, for reference, I'm six foot two, and the instrument is this much taller than me still. So I've got the bell here. This is a completed bell. Um, it has a little bit of the key work on it. If you look closely, you'll see uh, the blue. Uh, these are 3D printed. Uh, prototypes of key arms, those will get cut out eventually of brass. There is the bass joint, and the bass joint is going to be almost identical to a standard bassoon bass joint. Um, it'll have pretty much the same key work. We are in the design process of that now. Uh, in fact, I have the upper part of the bass joint on the 3D printer as we speak. We've been going through a lot of design iterations on that in the last couple weeks, uh, Jared and I have, um, and a lot of uh, issues have been uh, uh, worked out resolving ergonomics. This has proven to be one of the most difficult joints to design from an ergonomic standpoint. Uh, and that's due to how wide it is and where the keys lie uh, in relationship to the hand. Then I got the wing joint, but the wing joint is in two pieces, upper and lower. So the upper has a distinctive shepherd's crook in it, and the lower is here. Uh, the lower is going to get a 
pretty big redesign at some point and it's going to have a plateau on it to uh, raise up the fingers some so there'll be more room for the keys and then of course I have a boot joint here and the boot joint is a little bit different than a standard boot joint in that uh, the biggest thing is the C sharp key which would normally be on the wing joint has moved to the boot joint and that's one of the biggest acoustical differences the instrument can be played either standing or seated. Let me go ahead and assemble it. Oh, and of course, there will be a vocal. The vocal will come out and uh, down and out. Uh, that part has not been completed yet. Uh, and to play it standing, I've got a cello peg. And this is actually just a standard stock cello peg that I bought off of Amazon and we built into the instrument a receiver so that it just slides right in in a friction fit. Uh, future models will have a, um, a tightening screw on it so that it won't fall out and then it will rest right on the floor. In fact I need to raise this up just a little bit. The problem with this instrument standing in my house is that uh, the bell is right at the ceiling. In fact, this is still just a hair too low for my hands. You can see my right hand is pointed almost straight down. Ideally, I would want the instrument up about here. And you can see my right hand now has a much more natural bend to it. The problem with that is the bell is touching the ceiling. So I would not play this standing in a house with a low ceiling. Seated, however, it's perfectly fine. I uh, would just lower the end pin. Uh, final model will have a balance hanger coming off of the top of the boot joint for a neck strap ring that will help alleviate some of the weight. It is very top heavy with this extra long bell. Hopefully, however, with the addition of the key work lower down, that will move the center of gravity from what's essentially right at the first finger tone hole down lower. We'd like to get the center of gravity closer to the top of the boot joint. Hopefully that will work, uh, but a balance hanger will be added on to use a neck strap. Uh, as far as sound goes, uh, the Final projected sound is supposed to be somewhere between the bassoon and the contrabassoon. Think of it as a very rich sounding bassoon. And in the few sound tests I've done on the instrument, that's really what it sounds like. Uh, scoring for the instrument, of course, would be like uh, you would do as a third bassoon in a group of two bassoons or three bassoons and contrabassoon. Just take that third bassoon, put it over on a great bassoon, and you get a little bit at lower range a nice warmer sound and you really bridge the tonal gap between the bassoon and the contrabassoon. Uh, I look forward to working with composers uh, with this instrument, uh, trying to figure out exactly what it can do tonally, what it will be able to do. Uh, that's still probably end of the year into next year before stuff like that will happen. Um, but we are moving along very quickly on the design process on the instrument. Um, like I said, the final base joint is on the 3D printer right now. Um, there are still some tweaks we need to do on it. Um, within the next few weeks, we'll start on the final design process on the boot joint, which is going to take several weeks to do because it is a supremely complicated mechanism down here. And then finally, once that's done, we'll move on to the wing joint. Um, oh, the name, Great Bassoon. Why Great Bassoon? I hear so many people say, well, you can call it a, a contra tenor room or a contra alto bassoon. None of those names really work linguistically. Um, great bass is the official name of a voice between bass and contra bass. With contra bassoon, it's a... It's really an abbreviation of contrabass bassoon, and we just always call it contrabassoon as one word. Well, with great bass bassoon, we've got, we do the same thing as one word, great bassoon. 
same as you would do with contrabassoon. So that's where the name comes from. That's my preferred name for the instrument. There is some talk about calling it a semi-contrabassoon. Um, that's a name that originates uh, probably in the Lindsay Langwell uh, bassoon and contrabassoon book. Uh, it is not an official uh, title, uh, despite what Wikipedia says. By the way, I am the one who wrote the Wikipedia article on the instrument years and years ago. Um, it has not been updated substantially since then, however. Um, but yeah, Great Bassoon is the official name of it, and it's the one that I hope people will use for such an instrument. Uh, at some point, I would like to dive into the literature that exists for this instrument, the very little amount of literature that does exist, and that it may be a much larger project that will need some community uh, help on that, figuring out what works uh, are extant for an instrument of this size. But, of course, until next time, um, keep your questions coming on the instrument. Leave them down below. Uh, and I hope you uh, enjoyed this video explaining what is the Great Bassoon.